Hey guys, Mike Toy here, Bonsai Boise. So today I'm going to do a video on my Siberian Elm Bonsai. I'm going to be doing a couple things. I'm going to be doing an air layer on this. And I'm going to be doing a little forced grouping of cuttings from this. First, the air layer. So I dug this up in 2017. Done some work to it since then. As it used to have a great big ugly knob right there and I've been chipping away at that each year. And I gotta say I love this tree, but there's a couple aspects to it that I don't love. Um, it's got a real long, narrow part of the trunk. Um, and that's where I'm gonna be doing this air layer. As you can see, there's a big, narrow, straight stretch right there, from there to there. And then there's a branch up on the left, not that one, but above that one. It's also kind of coming out at a 90 degree angle, so we're gonna remove that. So yeah, I'm gonna do the air layer right above that smallest branch on the left, now the right. <laughs> I moved too quick. And I've got some cuttings from last year that I'm gonna be doing the forest group with. You can see it's just starting to bud out there. I'm also gonna give you a kind of a run through of a previous Siberian Elm Forest that I made a couple of years ago and how quickly it progressed. Um, give you just a snippet of that here in a second. But yeah, right there is where I'm going to do the air layer. And there it is. Unfortunately, the footage that I took um, making this air layer didn't take well, what I did wrong. But anyways, it wasn't that fascinating. All I do is I, for anyone who isn't familiar with the technique, you just, I call it scoring a ring around the branch or the trunk. And that severs the connection to the roots. You're cutting down um, past the cambium layer. So what happens then is you just wrap sphagnum moss around that ring and wrap it up with plastic. And then as the leaves come out, it pushes energy down. The energy can't get to the roots. So it starts to sprout new roots where you scored the ring. I've got a bucket of sphagnum moss here. Super appealing looking stuff. And all you do is you just kind of slop it on there and wrap it in plastic. Poke a couple holes in the plastic so that it can still drain. You want to keep it pretty tight so there's not a lot of air gaps in there. That's not the prettiest air layer job I've ever done, but it'll do. Then outside it goes. This was a couple weeks ago. Took some cuttings from this job. But a quick break to look at the rain. It was a rainy Saturday morning. The board, I thought, you know what I'll do? You can see how it leafed out there already. I thought, you know what I'll do? As I will take all my various cuttings, make a forest out of them. So I've got a little plastic pot there, just a little plastic training pot. There's some of the cuttings. They're very tiny. They're, I mean, I, I want to emphasize these aren't exciting looking cuttings that I'm working with. Also, some of these are actually Japanese elm, Zelkova. Um, they got a little mixed up last year. I, it's easy to tell apart when they're all leafed out, but uh, once the leaves came off in fall, I went, oh boy, now I don't know what's what. But here in a second here, we're going to go back in time to a few years ago when I made my first Siberian Elm Forest. Let's take a look. So this is it in June of 2019. Now granted, these cuttings were a little bit bigger. They're a little more impressive, I guess, than the current ones I'm using today. Um... And I think I started with nine in this group. And there it is. This is the video that I made. I'll post a link to it here. This is me talking about it. But you can get an idea. I mean, you see, they're not very big. And then fast forward two years, and this is what they look like now. So only three out of the nine survived. These are the three that survived which is why you've got three trees and huge pot because <laughs> uh, I haven't repotted it, but not bad for two years. 
Now, I, I have to say, um, see, that's what it started with there. And that's what it is now. So it's worth doing, even with small cuttings. I mean, elms just grow so fast. You can see the trunks still aren't very thick on them, but the branching and ramification and style and character is just fantastic for two years. So if you're wondering why I'm messing around with tiny little cuttings like this, that's why. They're small now, but they have lots of potential. I'm just putting some bonsai soil in here. One of the tricky parts to doing forest cuttings, in my experience at least, unless you're wiring them in, which I am not, it can be a little tricky just to get them to stand upright and then get those ones to stand upright while you're putting the new ones in and you're working the soil into those and then you're disturbing it on the other side and the other one wants to fall over. So it can be a little tricky. My trick when I run into that situation, there's little rocks, little decorative rocks, just to kind of prop them up while I'm getting them all in there. Um, you may want to consider wiring them in if that's your thing. I'm taking these cuttings out of the soil they're in because I don't really know the condition of this soil. Probably not very good. I mean, I don't use premium soil for cuttings. Of course, I have several buckets of various degrees of soil. I mean, what person doesn't, right? That's normal. I'm not putting a lot of emphasis on where I'm putting them. I'm putting a little bit. I mean, anything that's obvious to me, like my idea is to put the tallest ones in the middle and have them get progressively shorter as it gets closer and closer to the outer rim. And the ones that have a lean to it, like that one on the right, you know, have it leaning outward instead of inward and that's about where it, it ends from that point on I just start sticking them wherever because as you saw in that one from a couple years ago only three out of nine survived so there's a good chance many of these will not make it now, so far all the cuttings I'm using are one year old from last year I'm pretty curious to see which of these are uh, the Japanese elm and which are the Siberian elm. I'm hoping it's spaced out in some kind of cool way. One thing I like about forest groupings like this is that they don't take a lot of effort. I mean, you can see I'm just sticking cuttings in wherever. And you don't know which ones are going to survive could be all the ones on the left or all the ones on the right or the middle or half and half you, you just have no idea as you saw from the one two years ago for whatever reason three that were closest together made it and the rest didn't I don't know why so you can see I've got a couple of Little decorative rocks in there just to kind of help prop them up on doing this give it a good watering now for some reason i really thought the amount of cuttings i had were going to fill this pot more and it didn't it still looks sparse to me so i was trying to think of what to do if i was happy with it and no i'm really not so i went and got some of the cuttings from when i did the air layer so i did a little trim on it at the same time now, the, there's the cuttings from a couple weeks ago when I did the air layer. The chances of survival on these are even less. But who cares? I've got lots of them. So I just start sticking them in wherever. I have to say, I know I say it a lot. I say it in all my elm bonsai videos. I love working with elms. I just do. They're fast growing. They have small leaves. They're very forgiving. You can propagate them with cuttings very easily. And they get ramification like crazy. So yeah, this is it. This is my little, my new Siberian Zelkova elm forest group in all of its 
majestic glory <laughs> someday maybe someday but thank you for watching please like and subscribe and i appreciate everyone who does have a good rest of your day everybody